chart. <laughs> Taller than you now. Homunculus. Yes, <laughs> momentarily winning. <laughs> Large and in charge. <laughs> Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do... Pretty much everything. Wow. There's just about everything, usually, though. Except for apparently metal casting. Wow. Ooh. Ah, it hurts so bad. Sad because it's <laughs> true. Damn it. I would like to introduce you to Rachel Fraze. Rachel Fraze is the winner for our Level Up LARP competition and a sewer extraordinaire. So we brought her on because, one, we're going to be going to Germany. And there at Conquest, they have a thing they call tuba? To its tubs, bathtubs, bathhouse, house of bath. So Rachel had a really great idea when it came to that, and we thought it'd be cool if she jumped on the show and showed you how to do it. I decided I needed to make a swimsuit that was appropriate for a LARPing environment. And I thought that was a really interesting take because we try to stay in character as much as possible and there are definitely going to be occasions in which you're going to want to get into the water at some of these. So having some sort of in-character setup would be awesome. So yeah, we're going to jump right into it, I think, and uh, level up this skill. Hey, this is Editing Kit. As a quick aside, I realize that not all of you have like a fancy sewing machine to do skills like this. And if you're like me, you're just really not good with the one you do have. I'm trying, I promise. <laughs> but that's where today's sponsor, Skillshare, can come in to save the day. The class, Hand Sewing Basics, Work Wonders with Fabric, Needle, and Thread by Bernadette Banner, demystifies the dark arts that are hand sewing techniques, making it super easy for anybody to learn these skills and give it a shot. If you're at all like me, you've been following Bernadette's YouTube channel for a long time and seen some of the amazing things she's been able to do there. With this tutorial series on Skillshare, she gets much more in depth into showing the skills she uses to perform the stitch magic that she does. Skillshare has a huge amount of artistic and crafting content as well as things to help you with your career or business venture. I personally have been trying to get more organized and better at time management, so I've been taking Productivity for Creatives, Build the System that Brings Out Your Best by Thomas Frank. Another YouTuber, by the way, I think I have a theme. <laughs> if you're interested to learn a new skill, Skillshare has a great offer for our community. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below will get one month free of Skillshare. Wait a minute, I'm a YouTuber. Maybe I should do a Skillshare class. Leave in the comments section if, if you'd watch my Skillshare. All right, back to the video. First things first, what type of fabric are you using for this? Like, what would you recommend? I wouldn't even know where to start. I looked around on the internet and couldn't really find anything besides like chain mail bikinis. <laughs> that adds so many One, armor points though. Chasing. <laughs> Ugh. And two, that's not great for water. You sink like a stone, just oh no, my bikini. The rust, the it's it's not a good not a good time. The one swimsuit that I thought would be appropriate for, from a TV show was Katara's swimsuit in that one episode of The Last Day event. I'm gonna put it right over her face right now. And I I really like it because it has enough coverage, it's got those cool wraps, and I thought, all right, I've got this design. So I thought I needed something stretchy, but that still looked fairly medieval. Like something that could have been around in that time and doesn't like, it's not spandex, it's not shiny, it's not too artificial looking, right? So I go and I order some uh, stretch hemp. Hemp is a wonderful Stretch. fiber. It dries faster than cotton, but kind of has the same feel to it. That is pretty cool. So I went and I ordered a bunch of different thicknesses of stretch hemp and also just some of their 100% hemp so I could kind of contrast it with a flax linen that I already have. And it, it was an okay fabric right up until I did the water test where I just dumped all my samples in water and see how long it took them to dry. My 100% hemp linen, about 20, 30 minutes to be fully dry. I checked back four hours later and this cotton hemp blend was still wet. Some say it's still drying to this very day. Practicality kind of won out. I kind of want this to be more of a faster drying thing than a this is going to be wet all day kind of thing. Hemp linen it is. We've settled on hemp linen. I, I, I want to go ahead and, and preface one thing because I know it'll be asked in the comment section because it is whenever Maddie's here. She's bouncing because I, I've not given her a real chair. She's sitting on a yoga ball. That's all I give my guests. It's just a yoga ball. So as she's talking, if you just see her kind of maneuvering around, that's why, because I'm a really bad host. So <laughs> she's like incredibly <laughs> hyper. <laughs> it's fun, it's fine. Uh, all right, so let's get into how you made this thing. Because 
linen is not a very stretchy fiber on the straight grain and because linen tends to uh, like the fabric itself stretches a little bit in the heat I needed something that was very much a wrap top just in case it, it got loose in the hot tub and decided to uh, stop doing its job stop doing its <laughs> job it decided to drape we don't necessarily like drapey tops here when that's the only thing you have on so I decided that it was going to be a halter style top I was going to start by just cutting out a strap for the halter that would go around here you just cut that out of regular like... I just I cut it out of just a, a regular cotton fabric because this is just this is a mock-up you don't want to use your fancy fabric for your test. Super important. Because <laughs> that wastes a lot of fabric because it is expensive to get nice fabric. So I just cut out a strip of fabric and tied it around my body. And then I decided I needed, I needed to measure the cuffs. They were going to wrap around from my armpits forward and around my body. So I measured, I measured along the strap approximately where I thought, like I needed coverage. Top of my boob to the under boob. And Under boob then I term. measured from about the about the middle of that to across the boob, the up and down of the triangle. The, what the, is that called? The up and down of the triangle. <laughs> For across all breasts are triangular. We've learned this from Tomb Raider in the '90s. Per perfect polygons. So I took those two measurements there: the bottom of the triangle right along the strap, and the from the strap to the point of the triangle on top. You still need the the wrapping strap, and so I made an inch and a half kind of at the top where the triangle point needed to be, and drew out lines from there. For my mock-ups, I don't add any seam allowance unless I'm attaching a seam. All of these seams are just where I want the eventual seam to be because it gives me a better visual. I put the strip around my neck, I measured with a pin approximately where I thought it would start and end, and I just a uh, quick basting stitch on there, and it does cover what I needed to cover, but I'm not confident that it'll, it'll stay that way <laughs> as the night progresses. You know, I think it's it's decently good down here. I just need to add maybe an extra, let's say, inch and a half-ish to the top. You know, just a little, little extra strip triangle thing here. So I've added a strip here on this side. It does definitely provide a little more coverage. I decided to go with like two inches because I figure I could always like uh, pin it back. And it, you know. It's it's a little a little lopsided in the way it's uh, on my body. I guess I could angle it down more. That's that is an option, and that would uh, make things more secure in this way. Um, I could also potentially pin it back here. That solves my problem as well. If I particularly wanted to, it would be a little more fitted that way make a strip make it go here or i could even put that that dart in here for this particular project i really want it to be just like this is a flat triangle the on the table and on my body because i don't want to have to do a whole bunch of seaming linen if you just leave the raw seam it will fray and your seam will just rip apart because the threads are no longer fabric they're just a bunch of loose threads so you have to really treat the seams carefully either with a serger or by hand stitching them down. You can machine stitch, but that's easily, it's easy to mess that up. So I always like to do things by hand because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist sometimes. Kind of like some people. Depends on if we're talking about ovals or not. Wow. <laughs> My ovals are perfect. Your ovals are perfect. Perfect. So we're just, we're just gonna, gonna try something else. Maybe a, a slightly bigger triangle just shifted down a little bit so it's not so high in the neck and it goes more across the body this way. I went and added uh, the new template down with the, the two strips sewn together on and tried to cut it as about the same size but as flat as I could because I really didn't want any darts in it because that's just more complexity that I do not need in my life. And this is the result of that. You know, it definitely covers more. The shape of this triangle fits my body in such a way that like on the bottom here, this feels really good and in keeping with the shape of the fabric. So time to add more on the top here just for just for a little little more coverage and that is what i did on this side over here and just put on like three and a half inches i figure anything i don't want i can kind of like just just trim down pin down 
the plan, you know? This is kinda flopping, flopping open again, um, and I don't want to do any kind of darting here because it fits up in through here. So what I really just need to do is take a bit of fabric off, pin that down real quick wherever I need it to be. And since this is just uh, an adjustment to the outside, I don't really feel the need to make another mock-up with just this cut off because I could just go in with a pair of scissors and do that. It's not gonna change the overall fit because everything else is fitting nicely. It's just that strip needs to be cut off. So now it's time to cut it out of our, our main fabric. So all I did here was laid out my triangles down on the fabric and adding about uh, half an inch of seam allowance, cut them out and uh, folded all of the edges over, except for the edge that's gonna be going into the halter strap, sewed them up with a straight stitch. So for this project, I need two strips of fabric, one for around the halter, around my neck and back, and one for around the waist. So let's see how she made it. I like this like uh, Christmas special, like that's a real <laughs> fun thing. Let's see how they're doing over there, that <laughs> it jumps over. Let's say you want it to be an inch thick. You need an inch for one side, an inch for the other side, plus seam allowances for both of those. So it'll end up being, for me, with my half inch seam allowance, three inches wide. And from there, you fold it hot dog style uh, so that the edges are even and you iron that down. And then you fold the seam allowances toward the inside of the hot dog and iron both of those down as well, trying to make sure that they're as even as you can. So now you need to attach your boob pieces to this halter strap. To do that, I basically, I had a knot tied at the base of my neck, pretty centered, and so I used that on my mock-up to measure out how far from the knot the boob piece started. Sometimes it helps, especially if you have, uh, you know, two different pieces and you want to just make sure you get it right is instead of laying it out on the table, kind of do it roughly on your body to be really sure. So I have the open side facing forwards because that's where I'm going to insert these things. I've got the, this is the long, longer edge. Uh, so that's going to go um, seam facing me about roughly here. Roughly. The other one. Uh, and then I just put them down on the table, made sure that they were as far away from the that center point as I wanted them to be, and pinned them inside of both pieces of that halter strip. Made sure everything was all pinned up nicely so I could try it on and make sure that it sit where I needed it to sit before I sewed it. It's a lot easier to do it now than it is unstitch a seam and have to adjust something. I've only recently learned how to use a seam ripper. I was very proud. It was like black magic when I saw how it worked. I was like, well, really? That makes so much more sense. Good job. Uh, yeah, thank you. I was very proud of myself. I'm still noticing a little bit of uh, gaping here. Yeah, they're, they're actually both gaping a little now that I'm evening it up down here. So well, these corners are fine, but these need to be brought up a little bit more to kind of close that gap. So I'll probably repin like maybe from here up just like, just like maybe a half an inch in. So that's what I did. I just unpinned a little bit from the, uh, up towards the neck to a little bit before center and scooched it up in the halter a bit, trimming away a little bit more and uh, repinned it and tried it on again. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that fits. It's, you know, it's close to uh, my chest here. I don't have any of that bowing out. There is a little bit, but it's a stretchy fabric. It's going to stretch a little bit. Um, and that's, that's okay. It's secure enough that I don't feel like anything's going to fall out. I did do a kind of like flippy thing here. You can kind of see it's twisted around in the front on both sides. It's to take a little bit of that tension out of that top thing. Um, and I, I think it looks fine even with the flippy things. I, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with, with how, how should I put it? This is so dope! Wow, I can. <laughs> You know, complex, you're predictable. A complex complex. It is dope though, right? <laughs> like, whatever, man. Like, it was coming out really, really good. It was a pile of, she comes in with a pile of fabric. She's like, I'm gonna make a thing. Um, and if it wasn't for me, like, moving the camera and be like, do that again. I need to see it. She's real fast, too. <laughs> Whatever, I thought it was dope. You just need to widen your vocabulary. <laughs> dope says it all. It is a, a noun and a verb. Like, you're a dope. Right? But it's different. She's a dope dope.
All right, yeah. so you were happy with the way all that laid out. So then you're just going to basically, like, while it's in there, you're going to pin it up again and just run it through the sewing yep. machine? I'm going to sew the whole thing together from the end of the strip through the, the halter boob section to the other end. Now it is on to the bottom section. I decided for this part of the project, I was still going to model it after the, uh, the Katara outfit, but forego the leg wraps because... It's a lot of <laughs> it's, it's a lot of wrapping and I don't have a stretch fabric that I can just sew together. We're just gonna do the uh, panels in the front connected by um, the wrapping underneath. It'll make sense, I promise. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny when you're on camera, you're saying stuff and you hear words come out of your mouth and you're like, that made sense to me. I know that's not gonna make sense to you. <laughs> You'll see. You'll see. Well, we're here right now. So we're starting to say, how do you go about even getting the measurements? Are you just using like other clothing or do you measure yourself for it? So for this project, it's going to have two flaps, one in the front and one, one in the back. You don't want them to be exactly the same size because obviously your front and the back are not symmetrical. So uh, your butt's gonna get in the way and lift everything up. And but anyway, so what I did was measure um, approximately where I wanted this front flap to fall, both across my hips and down my leg. And I, I did the same thing for the back, and of course the back measurements were a little bit larger. But once you have those measurements, um, I started with the back panel and you take it and you draw out your square panel, making sure that there's enough fabric in front of you that you can do kind of the, the whole thing in one fell swoop. So to kind of get an idea of that, you take your length measurements, both of them, add them together, and then um, wrap the tape measure around under your crotch up to the, that point where um, around your waistband and you you add those three numbers together and that's approximately how much length you're going to need. So once I have this panel lined up, I take a pair of underwear that I have. Uh, you want them to be something that you're comfortable with wearing, so it's it probably shouldn't be something super baggy or super thongy. So you're gonna take the, uh, the waistband of that and flip it out onto the table backside down to uh, and line up the waistband with the flap that you just made um, and it is okay if there is some the flap is wider or narrower than your underwear you can kind of fudge those lines um, a little bit you just want to make sure that your underwear is laid down as flat as you can and pin that down um, kind of all along the edges and you're only doing, if I remember right, you only do like half, right? Because then you can duplicate it and make it symmetrical. Yep, I, you can, you can trace it all out if you want. But what I, j I did is I just only did, I marked the important points that I knew were, were like you symmetrical. Needed these I need, yeah. I need the top. I need the, uh, the bottom of the underwear, like the bottom of the the crotch area. And I just, since I'm kind of fudging the line, especially, I want them to be symmetrical. So. We pretty much uh, are precise on one side, kind of loose on the other, and eventually we'll flip it over and use the precise side as a model for the other side as well. What you're gonna do after you have the, the butt traced out, um, now you've got to flip it over and do the front part. You do that by making sure that the bottom of the underwear where you're going to, which is gonna be the pivot point for you flipping it, is nicely pinned down as close to the, the edge as you can. You're gonna take all the rest of the pins out and you're gonna go ahead and uh, flip that over. And then kinda, kinda repin it to adjust and uh, you know, make sure that all of the, all of the edges are pinned down. Um, it's kinda awkward because the part that you need to pin down is under the butt of the underwear, but just make sure that you, you get the, the waistband and you keep that bottom of the crotch pinned down and you should be able to figure it out. It's all one piece. It's not like you ever have to cut it and sew it up. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. Yep, once you've got that front section of uh, of the underwear like traced out, you just go ahead and add the whatever front panel measurements you did onto the end of that. Um, so it's a block, the underwear section, and another block. And after that, um, you just I just took a belt that I had lying around and used that for the waistband, uh, put the belt on and kind of tucked everything up underneath, uh, flipping, using the uh, like the panels like underneath the belt and flipping it 
over the front of everything. You know, it's it covers what needs to be covered even if it doesn't. It's okay. I've got some actual underwear under there. It's not just this, this flappy thing in the front. Um, it feels like this is where I want it. I also think it might be nice to add a little bit more um, width here. So instead of like going out to the side here, it falls more down this way. And I believe I can do that by just adding a triangle, kind of like here. Say so that's about six inches. I didn't think I needed to make an additional mock-up to see how it would fit. I figured worst comes to worst, like cut this out and then I have to unfortunately add another panel. Like It's just like coverage. Like It's, the, it's just more yeah. coverage. The if important I don't bits like fit. It, <laughs> the important bits fit. If I don't like it, I could, I could just cut it off. So what I did was I laid the mock-up fabric straight out on my, my linen and I uh, just mar measured out a little bit further and a little bit diagonally from that back panel to get where I wanted it to be. Of course, adding seam, seam allowance. Seam allowance is uh, folded up, pinned in place, and sewn. Now for this part of the project, I wanted to make sure that I didn't get that stretching and misshaping of the fabric that I did with the top, especially on the crotch. Like if it's if it's stretched out a little bit at the ends of these panels, I can I can deal with that by just altering the hem of that, it. Yeah, it's not the important bit. <laughs> so I I thought that the best way for me to do that would be to start sewing at the crotch and work out from there on each side, which was a little inconvenient because it does mean you have to you know, get your fabric all bunched up on the wrong side, on the wrong side of the foot, but it's not that much fabric, so I managed perfectly fine. So that, that like waviness, is it cause like as you're going, the fabric is like stretching towards the direction you're going in? So it by is, starting yeah. from the middle, you're like, you're reserving that stretchiness for the ends, mm -hmm. basically. Okay, that makes sense. So after sewing up the, uh, the crotch seams, kind of the side seams of the panels, I tried it on again, before I sewed up the before I sewed up the bottom hem, just to make sure that everything looked even, and I didn't need to uh, make the hem uh, shorter or longer than I originally thought. Looking, feeling good. I kind of like how the uh, how this is a little little bit longer in the back anyway. So looks like we're we're good to try and. Uh, Finish the the hem on the the bottom edges and the side edges here, and uh, after that we'll try it on again, see where it is, and then eventually end up uh, pinning it to this this waistband and sewing it there permanently. So once I was happy with where it was pinned, everything was snug and even. I tacked it into place on the belt. Now I didn't sew on the on the flap at all. Um, because I didn't want it to show on the outside. I did it kind of on the underwear part. Um, I just sewed only that part to the belt just so when the flap's in the front, you can't see it. I also made sure to uh, leave a little bit unsewn on each edge just so it didn't like peek out uh, from under the flap because I really wanted that it to look like it was just wrapped there and could have been uh, like taken out, I suppose. That's cool, actually. <laughs> I didn't think about that until you just said it now. I'm like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Now it just looks like it's a like mm. a, a wrap. That's cool for your character. All right. So there's a few different uh, ways that you could potentially tie this whole thing. The bottoms I've chosen to do a tie on just one side and to fasten it on the other side because it works that well for me. Um, you could do ties on both sides or like maybe kind of like a button closure if you really were sure that like you weren't gonna change body shape anytime soon. I feel like the tie kind of looks good, makes it seem more, not authentic, but more like, uh, more in character, more interesting, more rugged than like something that's like buttoned perfectly. As for uh, the top, you could, you could wrap it, you could tie it, you could use buttons, you could even use laces if you want. I've played around with like tying this in the front instead so it kind of wraps around in the back and then these kind of crisscross over the top of it. And, uh, masking that uh, so you don't have to worry about there being a knot in the 
back if you don't want to and you can just you can tie this in the front you could make it long enough to tie in the back or shorter to just wrap around once and tie in the back it's really up to you and what look you want I kind of like the more strappy look of it crossing and then reaching in the front. I decided to change it after wearing it around a little bit. I'm going to leave the straps as long as I have them for now until I get to spend a little bit more time in it and feel out what's comfortable for me. And then maybe I'll make some changes. Maybe I'll cut them shorter. Maybe I'll leave them longer. I don't know yet. So with that, I took her to to a, a local, I want to say a, a pond, but it was like a swamp. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was so in my head. Oh, uh, hold on. One moment. So I got this new fancy, like, you know, go camera, action camera. And I was like, I'm going to get such dope shots. This is crystal clear water and it like coming up from the water and it's going to look awesome. Instead, I got like this swamp <laughs> thing paddling around. The lily pad on her head. Hey, I am a lovely swamp thing. You are a lovely swamp thing. I could, I can be a pirate. I am a pirate. This is how we do. <laughs> Yar. The lake, yeah. the lake pirate. <laughs> Here's the lake pirate. But it was like one of those things where you, you, you step in it and your, your feet go squish down into the bottom. It was slimy and gross. But how did the how did the, the piece hold up? Was it good? Yeah, it held up really well. There was no shifting. Uh, there It wasn't see-through at all. I didn't feel it like uh, how some material, when it gets um, wet, you can feel it really pulling around. And I didn't feel this way with uh, it at all. If you are afraid of things touching you in ponds, just be aware that you have a lot of fabric strips dangling from you. Every few seconds, she's like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> what's that? Oh, it's me. It's just me. I mean, we were surrounded, like, in the middle of that pond where we were, there was, like, this log, and it had all this, like, algae on it. And I look under it, and there's fish and crawfish, and um, <laughs> she was very brave and a very good sport. <laughs> Uh, I still I still think the shots were epic. I'm I'm down with it. I like this camera a lot. But yeah, yo, your project was great. <laughs> I'm like nerding about I'm like, yes, you're my precious. But your project was good, but precious, precious. It's alright. <laughs> but yeah, I was really impressed by kind of seeing um, again that iterative approach of being like, hey, this is how it started. It was a scrap of fabrics or a pile of fabrics. They were nice fabrics. Pile of fabrics though, and like all the different iterations she made. Um, and, and how it went from this really early ideation phase into actually being something that like, it looked dope. It was really, really cool looking. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you came on and showed us how to do that. Thanks for having me. And now I have to, I have to deal with her in Germany. I'm being you nice. Get to deal with earmuffs, her in Germany. Earmuffs, earmuffs. It's been really <laughs> nice having her, but she's pain in the ass. Not any more than you. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's fair. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed what you saw here today. If you did, why don't you give me some of that like it love, and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. In the meantime, though... Keep leveling up, you. Lovely. Well done. Cheers. <laughs>